It's just turned into a pretty legit adventure. <laughs> sweat from underneath my jacket. My name is Jeff. I used to work at Ibis from 2008 until 2015. Ever since then, I've still been riding a lot of Ibis bikes. Ibis did sponsor this video and is making it happen. Beyond Ibis, I am supported by Industry 9, PNW Components, Jensen USA, and Shimano. This right here is the new Ibis cross-country bike. It's called the XC. I have not seen this thing in the flesh. Hold your breath, I'm holding mine. Ooh, nice. Hope that's not important. It's light. I think this is actually the photo sample that was sneak previewed in that pink bike article. Build the bike, build the bike, just build the bike. This cross country trail bike has a 100 mil travel frame with a 120 travel fork and the frame and shock weigh just under four pounds. I'm really a terrible person to be testing this bike because I don't ride anything shorter travel than my Ripley 120. This thing at 100 is far less. This bike here is a loner that I'll need to return to Ibis. It's a size medium and I'm 5'8 or 174 centimeters tall. This XE here is built up mostly with the Shimano XTR group set. I threw on my own personal Industry 9 Enduro 315 wheels which use only 24 spokes on both the front and rear wheels. The fork is a Fox Stepcast 34 at 120 travel and I threw on my PNW components cockpits and dropper seat post. I have literally lost sleep trying to decide which pedals I'm gonna ride on this bike. What would you do? Drop me a note in the comments below. Flats would be so sick. Clips would be so sick. My name is Flat Pedal. I would be a good choice for this bike because you like riding me all the time. Now, my name is Clips. You will love pedaling with me on this tiny little bike. I like you. I don't know if I trust you. Eh, I think it's gonna be Clips. First test ride complete. Well, I'm really looking forward to getting this bike on some very special backcountry trails. So without further ado, let's go backcountry. Peace. This bike's a little bit special. You see, not only is it a new bike, it's Ibis's first bike in a whole new category they've never yet dipped a toe into. At the same time, Ibis has also built an entire carbon manufacturing facility in California from the ground up. This is a pretty big deal, so I figured, let's go big on this bike and go to some really special places. After all, I don't know how to ride this bike, but this is how I want to ride it. If I start doing a ride report comparing this to the other bikes I've been riding, you're gonna say, of course, Jeff, it's very different because it's a cross country bike. Oh, head angle's a little bit steeper? Well, yes, it's supposed to be. Seat tube's not quite as steep? Oh, that's right, it's supposed to be because this bike's for riding all over the place, not just straight up, straight down. And how does that feel in the back country? Well, pretty darn good. I actually felt pretty safe on this bike as you're not tempted to hang it all out super far into the gnar. Instead, you're having a great time when the trail's a little bit mellower. Yes, the bike can get through some rougher stuff, some faster stuff, and it can handle some jumps, but the bread and butter of your smiles is gonna be the more normal terrain rather than the absolute gnarliest. As with any bike, the more I rode this thing, the more I adapted to it, and the more my own confidence grew. If you guys want to learn more about the carbon manufacturing process for this bike, I actually posted a video about that a few years ago, and I'll link to it in the top right corner. The feel of this bike for all-around riding is pretty different than most of the bikes I've been on, and it was just straight up fun to do something different. We definitely forgot our bug spray, and this is a banner year for mosquitoes here in the Northwest.
With this bike being less weight, less travel, and overall less effort to ride than most of my enduro bikes, I thought I'd take that less is more saying to the ultimate extreme and go do a bit of a road trip, but just strapping the bicycle down to my motorcycle. I'm gonna miss you, Evelina. I'm gonna miss you too. Today was a pretty full throttle day. Not only did I wake up camping with my daughter out on the Olympic Peninsula, drove home, packed up, not just packed up, not just packed up for a moto ride, not just packed up for a camp out, not just camp packed up for a mountain bike ride, but also to shoot a pretty cool vlog. My plan was to get to Idaho through the beautiful North Cascades Highway 20. This is a pretty incredible road. In fact, I'd say it's the most incredible road I've ever experienced in my entire life. North Cascades has some of the most amazing North American peaks, and the glacial turquoise blue water is something else. Now, this is also a very long road in the middle of nowhere, so it's quite a bit of adventure. So I had to stop riding because it was getting dark, there was deer. I do not want to have a deer jump in front of me. That could be devastating. I don't want to end up a statistic. Last year, 13 motorcyclists died on that road, and the road's only open from like May until October, so yeesh. And uh, I'll see you in the morning, peace. And good morning. Let's go ride mountain bikes. That's my girl trailhead coffee. Morning boys and girls. Hope you're all doing well. You might notice that the air looks a little bit different than normal. Well, forest fire season has just begun. Yep, there's a big forest fire on the next ridge over. So I was coming down the hill. It was pretty apparent. The big orange flames were visible from miles away. All right, let's uh, snap in, get up this hill before the air gets too bad. Ooh, dirt's still tacky. Glad that thing hasn't jumped the ridge yet. If the smoke is mostly here on the east side, maybe we can look west. This morning, all the smoke was settled down in the valley. Oh, what? So you yeah. could actually still see out. Oh, that would have been super cool. It was really pretty. Smoke or not, once you're at the top of the mountain, it's always going to be a good time to head back on down. I keep mentioning that I don't really know how to ride a cross-country bike. Well, my technique that I've stumbled across is that rather than monster trucking your way through the rough stuff, just try to float over it. If you can do a small hop and get over some rough bumps, it's going to be a lot smoother than getting bounced around with a little bit shorter travel. Again, that's just how I do it. Maybe cross-country folks have different techniques, but this trail was a great spot to practice this. As I am not gonna be racing this bike whatsoever, I went for a size medium. And that ended up meaning that the bike was really easy to manual. Yes, I can manual most bikes, but the size medium just pumped through wheelies and was able to hop over things and go through corners really nicely. It felt really good for this silly kind of riding I like to do. So this bike has a short back end, which I really like because it means I've got a get out of jail card and that I can pull the front end up because the front end's a pretty steep head angle. It's like a 67. So I really do like this short back end. It goes a longer back end, like on the first gen 29ers from some other brands I've ridden. Oh man, you got a steep head angle and you're just along for the ride with that long back end. If you're gonna do a long back end, you gotta have a slack head angle so you can ride it like a toboggan. I feel like short travel bikes don't ride well like toboggans in the first place as I jump over all that. So how can I edit this to make it look like I'm not stopping the session? Cross country is not about stopping. There we go, right on back to the trailhead. Looks like all my stuff's still here, that's good. That was super fun. Let's go ride in Idaho. This is the cluster that is cooking when you're moto camping. Today's episode of Cooking in the Bush with Jeff, we're gonna add a little bit of coconut oil to the pot. Let's make like caveman and have fire. 
First thing we're gonna throw in here would be the mushrooms. One of my favorite luxury items to bring camping is actually a spatula. Put in a few eggs. Never mind if your eggs start to burn immediately, that's okay because we have hot sauce. Dang it, it's burning more than I wanted. Let's go ahead and add some pork. Adding a little bit of spinach. You actually remember to bring vegetables when you're camping, hit the like button. Most folks don't. Looks like breakfast is ready. Start heading east across the state, the hot part of the state before it gets too crazy hot. I think I drink just as many fluids riding the motorcycle as I do a bicycle. Loading the actual bicycle is pretty straightforward. The rack grabs the pedal and the fork. Beyond that, I strap down the front wheel, but then considering all the gear I need to put on, all the bags that need loading up in the other bags, it's a process to get on and off the bike. So I spent today sweating my tail off on the moto. Thanks to that fire that started last night, that I could have ridden past last night. I went and rode my bike right around the corner, the very end of Highway 20. Road closed. I don't think I have two weeks worth of sausage and chili. <laughs> <laughs> Had to backtrack all the way. This detour would add an additional 216 miles to my trip. Honestly, if everything went according to plan, would it really even be an adventure? At this point, I'd already gone forwards five or so steps, and now I had to go back four of those steps in order to start over essentially from scratch. But the idea of giving up just was not appealing. We have a couple more days. Let's still go to Idaho. I spent the rest of the afternoon full throttle across the state of Washington, and as darkness fell, I had to find myself a campsite. I stumbled across some BLM lands, found a gate that wasn't locked, and found myself a cozy little spot. Morning there. This cruddy little campsite last night was awesome. Haven't gotten bothered yet. Wore earplugs and an eye mask, and I slept a full eight hours very comfortably. But I gotta quickly pack up and get this show on the road because we got a trail to ride. Let's go. Reaching the state line of Idaho is kind of a mixed bag. At first, I was excited to actually make it to more or less my destination. However, I had an overwhelming sense of dread as if anything were to happen out here, it's a long ways to get home. Furthermore, I had to pick my kid up from school in two more days. My time here in Idaho is gonna be limited, but I had to make the best of it. Knowing that it was gonna be a couple days in the mountains up here, and that there probably wasn't gonna be a whole lot of water up in those dry Idaho mountains, this was time to fill up the water reserves now. At this point, full of water and vinegar, as they like to say, I decided to try an actual trail to get to the top of the mountain. My motorcycle is not exactly very dirt worthy, and I don't have a lot of experience riding this motorcycle off-road, but I got brave and made it quite a ways up this until, I mean, maybe. I do think the motorcycle has this hill climb. I don't think I need to find out if I can't do it when I have this prototype lightweight bike on the back. Turning around is gonna be just as hard though. Well, oh, that's the trail that I just skipped. It looks pretty aggressive. We're going this way. Feels so good to be somewhere. As soon as I pulled into this campsite, the trip is officially back on track. That fire down in the Cascades, oh, that really put me back almost an entire day. But that's okay, because we're here now at an epic trail in Idaho. High elevation, it's only like 85 degrees instead of 97. It's all sweat from underneath my jacket. Gross. I just spent over an hour sitting in this little chair right here, not moving. I'm exhausted from riding that eight hours across the desert, 100 degree temperatures on the motorcycle. I'm not good in heat, I'm not good in motorcycles. But right now, we get to take the XE up on a really special place to a really cool ridge. Let's send it. Glad I brought a cross country bike for us. Fresh huckleberries. Smoke has us totally blocked off. Ah, oh, here we go. Oh, I can't ride up this. Riding down this is gonna sound so cool. Oh, do I see wreckage from an old lookout tower? You could totally see all the way to Mexico from up here. There was for sure a lookout. 
Holy moly. Oh, look out at that. <laughs> That's incredible. All right, guys, let's go shred. Oh man. Oh man. This is a small bike for this kind of rock riding. A lot of these trails are actually my favorites. Rather than being built by mountain bikes for mountain bikes, they were built by the Conservation Corps yes. back in the 30s, 40s and they don't really have that bermed out, jumpy feel to them. Instead, you're kind of solving riddles on how to ride the trail, or it's just a new challenge around every corner. There we go. Wasn't expecting that twig. It was expecting to throw me over the bars though. Ha <laughs> ha perfectly spaced out. A little landing from that little takeoff rock. Whoever put that rock there did a good job. You know what the straightaway needs? You guessed it, another wheelie. Whoa. Oh, look at this. I jump right into a berm. Sick. Got a sweet drift through that too. Oh, look at this. This is cool. If you ask me what mountain biking is about, this is it right here out in the woods, discovering something that I'll never forget and having essentially the time of my life. Factor in that quickly setting sun and while beautiful, there's now a very real challenge of getting back to camp before darkness sets in. Heck yeah. This trail is so incredibly loamy. There's no OHVs allowed. And there's not really much traffic that's out here, far out here in the middle of nowhere. Part of why I'm riding without knee pads is to remind myself about my old XC race riding style. I was never much of a very successful cross country person. Way better at downhill. But I've always really enjoyed cross country racing. Downeyville, all kinds of single speed XC races. There we go. So we've still got a little bit of orange glow over the mountain over there. Time to get down this hill. Wow, this is a fast trail. Oh, and right here is all the huckleberries. There's the road. Fingers crossed, everything's still where it should be. That was awesome. That said, I'm cooked. I'm just gonna make some couscous. Maybe have a few nuts like a squirrel. Tomorrow morning, it's on. See you all then, peace. I gotta say, this saddle here is my favorite campsite of the whole trip thus far. The saddle runs north-south, and then the wind comes from the west and blows towards the east, and it really cools it down. It's been so friggin' hot getting across Washington State. This is... Nice cooling breeze. Mmm. Oatmeal surprise. Delicacy. These parts. Normally, I'm a pretty terrible camper. That's why I have a camper van all built out. But somehow, last night I got a full eight hours sleep. I did get woken up at 3.30 in the morning by about a half dozen logging trucks. Which was kind of surprising, but whatever, you know. I'm not that far from the road, so that's how it goes. I feel great. <laughs> I definitely feel ready to turn some throttles and to go spin some pedals on the new XC. A little bike's pretty cool. It, I'm not used to riding small, light, short bikes, but it's cool. It's fun changing it up. I really am enjoying it. 
today's episode of Cooking with Jeff, first we're gonna add the coconut oil, which was coconut butter. Last time we checked in, because it wasn't so hot out. Now it's plenty hot. Add a little bit. Yum. One egg is a little bit crunched. We'll try it. Still looks like an egg. And now for the part that would really blow teenage Jeff's mind. Vegetables while camping. Whoa. Lunch is ready. Next up is to ride some trails that I've seen in moto videos, actually. Um, I was not intending to ride here, but I gotta get back to Bellingham, pick my kid up from school tomorrow, and Bellingham is a long ways away when you're just twisting a throttle on your moto. Idaho Starter Real Estate. That's the real deal, folks. Uh, I wanted to go quite a bit further north, but I think in the essence of being responsible with my time, I should just go ride some trails that don't seem that far away from where I am right now on the map. I think they're still gonna be plenty good. Let's boogie. That's a sweet setup. Thanks. It's a little clunky, but it works. What's that? It's a little clunky. It's not super dirt worthy, but it, it works. It works. So you see some golf clubs on there too, and you're really living. <laughs> well, that's what that guy does, uh, two by two cycles. He mostly sells golf club mounts for Harleys. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah, look, this is my place. Oh, cool. What's your name? Dave. Dave, Jeff, nice to meet you. What's up, man? Good to hey. meet you. Kind of like a moto destination. Yeah. A lot of single track. Dave's really not kidding here. Gold Creek Lodge is very well known in the moto community for having some amazing trails. I can't wait to get a dirt bike and come back. <laughs> Old campsite right here, Idaho backcountry. Oh yeah. That's long ways. So I did clear this step down once, but of course you can't see it on the camera with the angle I picked and it was too tiring to really do another time. I mean to startle you. You see all the skeletons back there? Yeah, it's quite a few. Have a good day. I was getting a little low on food, but more importantly, it was time to start heading homeward so I could pick my kid up from school the next day. So today just got a lot more exciting. I'll tell you guys about it once I figure out this camera situation. With parental responsibilities on the line, I was in a hurry to get back across the state of Washington. However, it was way too far to go all the way home this night, and I still had some hopes to do some more mountain biking. Despite it being the hottest time of the day, I went ahead and started heading west again, back across the desert of eastern Washington. And for the sketchiest moment of the entire trip, it was crossing Vantage Bridge over the Columbia River. With 32 mile per hour crosswinds in both directions, it was super hard to keep the motorcycle in a straight line. Now, this trip just got a lot more cool because I was gonna camp over at the community forest, a place I've been to before, not a whole lot of adventure, it should be very mellow. And then there's a fun little trail right past it, and it's got trees, it's sandy dirt, there's a rock or two. It's okay, it's not amazing. I took the what Google told me was the directions to the campsite, and we got onto highway. I'm like, wait a second, I think there's real mountains right here next to this highway. Before I go to this like mellow BLM campground, let me take a look at Trail Forks. I pop open my phone and sure enough, there's this a bunch of trails I've never ridden, I've wanted to ride, and I'm looking at the altitude and they're like up to 6,000 feet, which for Washington standards is super high. And they were closer than the campground. So, heck yeah, send it. So made a couple right turns, a couple wrong turns, a couple more right turns. And uh, yeah, the hill climbed up. I think I climbed from like 2,500 to five all with the moto in the dark <laughs> on dirt roads that got kind of rocky to the point that I'm a little concerned about going back down these roads in the morning. But if I do have a problem, 
I can always pull the fuse to my ABS system and bypass AP ABS. Today I went from riding really mellow trails that were okay with not much of a view to a whole bunch of adventure. And that's what trips like this are supposed to be all about. Well, this is pretty flat and it's very scenic. I think we just found camp. Waking up with nine hours to go until I had to pick my daughter up from school, I still had almost a four hour motorcycle ride in front of me. However, this kind of deadline meant there was still a chance of sneaking in a good mountain bike ride. I don't know about you, but I felt like my odds of pulling this go. off were surprisingly good. Oh, what do we got going on here? There's bear droppings everywhere. I think I'm legitimately in the bear's bedroom of my campsite. So I gotta go up 2,000 feet. Oh, this is gonna be a steep one. Single track, I love it. And it gets really steep. I'm expecting to walk up most of this trail, to be honest. I've gotta film for a moment because the trail's actually rideable here. And it's beautiful. This trail looks great. I do prefer lots of corners on my trails, but you know what? This will be okay. Coming up here, forest is all burned out and beautiful come right here, right here, and the trees basically end and straight up the mountain. This is like the capstone adventure for the trip. This is neat. Let's get a look at this. Oh my goodness. Wow. Just getting to right here makes this whole trip worthwhile. This is totally the capstone on a rad adventure. So we've got Rainier straight that way and then up north some super jagged huge peaks up in the cascade range this is why i like mountain biking getting to places like this right here dude this place is so rad let's drop it in mountain biking is a lot of different things to a lot of different people a lot of us really like the adrenaline of hitting new jumps for the first time or going bigger than ever before. Some of us just like the exercise, and heck, some of us absolutely love amazing views and experiencing things in the wild that otherwise we probably wouldn't. For me, I enjoy all of the above, but that extra thrill of getting in the backcountry and finding some amazing view is really the icing on the cake. Don't want to get too buck wild because it is slippery. Ah! Switch back. Ah, yep, I'm okay. <laughs> this bike definitely inspired me to get out here to some new places. And for that, I want to say thanks to Ibis. And I'm really glad I got a chance to ride it. <laughs> that was sweet. This is why I ride mountain bikes. The absolute thrill of adventure, the whole idea of getting to the backcountry and seeing some incredible stuff and pushing your own physical limits is really appealing. <laughs> Bit of a dance maneuver, but it worked. <laughs> By this point, I was having a great time. This adventure had totally made the trip. However, I wanted to do the longest wheelie I could, and my smile kind of kept me from focusing on my wheelie. And still, I had to remember, there is a deadline. I've gotta make it back to Bellingham and pick my kiddo up from school before it's too late. When I first got this XE, I didn't really know what to do with a 100 mil travel bike. I didn't really see myself riding the way I like to ride on this little thing. But a big part of adventure is an open mind, and you know what? The journey is more important than the destination. Learning how to ride the XE, finding where it excels, and realizing that the places I prefer to ride are actually very well suited to this bike was an awesome little journey in itself. Furthermore, getting better at my own camping skills, trying this whole motorcycling thing all the way across the state I absolutely love. This video was a wonderful adventure, and I want to thank all of you for joining me. I want to give a special shout out to Ibis for making this all possible. Thank you, Ibis. And an additional thanks to my supporters, PNW Components, Jensen USA, Industry 9, and Shimano. If you like this video, then please do hit that red subscribe button down below. And yes, I made it home an hour ahead of schedule and picked my kid up from school.